Hi, I'm Rhonda. I'm Angie. And we are Adventures in Nomadness. Guess what we have for you today? Another Q&A. And you know what the answers are? Via air? Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes. Hey, we haven't done a Q&A for a while, so thanks to our very good friend Bill in Snohomish, we have a whole bunch of great uh, questions that he wanted us to answer. So thanks, Bill. All right, so uh, what's our first question? Do you, what is the air pump that we use? And when we say air pump, it's not the air pump you use for your bike. This would be for the RV tires or truck tires. Uh, should you have a flat? And oh, by the way, we've had a flat. <laughs> yes, we did. So our Viair, we use a Viair 40047, 400P-RV, and we've used it a lot. Like Rhonda said, we actually woke up at a campground, must have run over something, and came out the next morning, and both left side truck tires were flat all the way down the rim. So we're like, oh no, what do we do? So I pulled out the Viair, pumped them both back up, made sure that they were not a fast leak, they were a slow leak, and then we were able to drive to town, which was about 35 miles, 40 miles away, and then get both tires repaired. Fortunately, it did not, re re uh, did not affect the trailer tires on that side too, because otherwise it would have been a big pain. So I think it happened when we we're on a move day, and uh, yeah, it was just on the one side, so it didn't hit the RV tires. The nice thing about Bayer is it comes with two really long cords which allows you to reach either your tow vehicle tires or your trailer tires. And that's very handy especially when you happen to be parked along the side of the road or in a spot where you can't actually move your vehicle closer to your RV. Um, we check the tire pressure every time we move the vehicle or the RV to make sure that it's at the correct inflation. We also use tire minders uh, that actually tell us whether or not we're having a problem with the inflation of our tires in the RV as we're going down the road. All right, question number two from Bill was, do you camp for free more than we pay? And the answer is, Yes, we do, actually. Uh, we spent pretty much the whole winter down here in California, Arizona, and uh, we have used our Thousand Trails membership just a little bit. Uh, the rest of the time, we have uh, boondocked quite a bit on BLM land or Kofa National Wild Wildlife Refuge, uh, some really great spots all over here. Um, we have paid for camping just a couple of times. One was when we went over to the California coast and we stayed right on the, the ocean we were over there for a memorial service, and then uh, we stayed at Lost Dutchman State Park for five nights, and we also stayed at uh, Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument, and that was $20 a night. So we have occasionally paid, but those are really awesome spots to camp, and why wouldn't you pay for those kind of spots? But between the free, L free BLM camping and um, our Thousand Trails membership, we, we rarely pay for any camping. Our third question is, what kind of roof solar do you have? Do you have a briefcase and do you have a generator? So the answer to that is yes, we do have yes. solar. We have yes. two solar panels. Would you like to tell us about those? Sure. <laughs> so we have two 170 watt solar panels on the roof and we did end up buying a solar suitcase, which we thought we needed and then we haven't used it. We were camping in a spot uh, in January at Sawtooth Canyon and the spot we were camped in was right by some rocks We were only getting about four or five hours of sunlight and it was really cold So our furnace was was running all night. So our, our battery is getting down to about the 55 60 percent range And you can only run them down to about 50 percent at the most So we promptly ordered a solar suitcase and then because we've been camping in the wide open desert of Arizona We with our two solar panels on the roof. We have not needed at all our solar suitcase. Uh, fortunately, we can use that solar suitcase for our Rock Pals portable lithium battery that we have. Um, and then when we go back to Washington later on, 
uh, April May time frame we'll be able we'll probably will need it we have run into issues with having enough solar power uh, when we're dry camping because there's so many trees in Washington that really you know put too much of a shadow on top of those solar panels and then a lot of times it's just kind of uh, gray and not sunny so we fully anticipate we will be using that solar suitcase uh, pretty soon here and I know it'll come in really handy uh, also when we're up in Alaska this summer even though it's you know daylight our property up there is you know very treed in and so I'm not sure how much direct sunlight is going to be on our solar panels so that may be another spot where we use it as well but it'll come in handy as far as a generator we haven't needed one yet so until we absolutely need one we won't buy one we may end up getting one again when we go to Alaska um, just because we will be uh, working on our cabin up there and probably need some power tools and the generator is going to be something we, we will need at some point. Uh, it's just a matter if we rent one depending on how long we need it or if we want to go ahead and bite the bullet uh, and buy uh, like a 2200 or something like that which we could probably use with a soft start with our AC but we don't like hot climates so we try to stay away from places where we'll need our AC or we'll go someplace that has hookups so we can run the AC that way. So no on the generator as of yet. All right, and, uh, question number four. Do we carry an extra dump tank on wheels? You know, those blue boy things you see people wheeling around in a campground <laughs> behind their, their truck and no. We, we had one put behind our RV once, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Campground <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, so no, we haven't needed one and kind of a, the second part of that question, I guess, is how long can we actually boondock for? How and dirty can you be? Yeah, how dirty can you be? No, what what really. can you put up with? <laughs> well, it really comes down to, you know, some people insist on having a wet shower or long showers and that means you need to carry more water and you need to have a larger gray tank or some way of you disposing of that water and a lot of people use those portables to do that with. That way they could dump their tank into that and take it somewhere to actually dispose of it. It's really good to kind of check the the laws and regulations too. Um, on BLM you are not do not you know dump gray out of your tank that is illegal but some places will allow you to you know if you're going to do your dishes outside or in a tub inside you can dump that water out on the ground. Uh, also, you could take a shower outside. As long as it's biodegradable soap. Yeah, so check definitely check the, the rules and regulations where you're going to be camping at because that's one way we've been able to conserve water too is just by capturing water and then dumping that water outside when, when we can. But we've gone two weeks um, before boondocking without having to dump, but we did have to, we were getting pretty close on our gray, had plenty of black uh, cap capacity left and we did add about five gallons of fresh water to our tank but other than that uh, we did pretty good over two weeks and maybe we could stretch it out but part of it comes down to you know are there other options for showers because you can't take very many showers and then you know not um, and then not stretch your, your tanks too far so sometimes it will be near a town that might have showers quartzite is one place where there's probably four different spots maybe five different places to take showers in town and that can definitely stretch your water out um, and good places to, to get and dump there. All right, so our next question is, any problems with our battery bank? No. So far I would say no, and I'm not sure when, when that question is asked what, we, what the intent there is. Um, we went with two six volt AGMs when we purchased our, our Escape RV. Um, so far we've not really run it down to 50 percent you want to make sure that you don't uh, use the power on your batteries beyond 50 percent because then they won't charge up fully so you gradually are losing your capability to store power so instead of being able to charge up to 100 percent fully charged it'll only charge up to like 98 percent or something like that and each time you go below 50 percent you're losing that so pretty soon you have batteries that you can't charge up. And we have a friend that we just stayed with recently who ran into that issue. Mark? Uh, we won't mention your name though. <laughs> um, so basically we haven't because we do watch our battery usage and we've had for the most part plenty of power coming in our solar 
uh, for our power needs. Now we don't use a whole lot of appliances. By appliances I mean we don't have electric toasters and coffee makers and toaster ovens and, and we don't have all that stuff. What we do have are cameras, computing equipment and things like that that need to be charged up. We do use our 700 watt microwave but we only use it for just a few minutes in the morning and sometimes to reheat something in the afternoon or evening. Um, so far we have not had any problems with that. We typically are charged up or have about 80% plus by the time we go to bed and that's plenty to run propane heater during the night should we have the need. Um, and it's been so much warmer lately that we haven't had the fan running on the furnace so that's you know our, our usage has gone even down even more. So what we try to do if we are here in the RV during the daytime is check to see by midday if we're 100% because at that point our solar power isn't going anywhere and that's an opportunity to start plugging in our electronics like our computers and that that need to be charged up. So then all of those batteries get charged up and we have 100% um, in our battery banks. As the sun starts going down, we get less power coming in and we're in here potentially using lights. Our power is going to go down. So like I said, we might be down into the 80s by the time we turn the lights out and go to bed. But that's plenty enough to get us through the, the next day. And typically we only use maybe 10% overnight depending on how much uh, the, 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 uh, the heater runs. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. And... Uh, our last question, do we use a booster for our phone? And yes, but we haven't had to use it very often. Uh, we've had our booster now for a couple of years. We actually used it at our house when we turned our, um, our internet off. Uh, so we have a really good grandfathered in plan with Verizon. Uh, we've got the MiFi at $65 a month with unlimited data and that's a true unlimited so we're pretty lucky with that. We do use a, a WeBoost and we do have an older one that's uh, used for us uh, made for RVs and I just uh, we used it not that long ago in here and it worked great and then this area where we're at right now we, we might put the antenna back up again. Now uh, we do have it basically um, an antenna that comes up temporarily which just suction cup to the side of the RV and a flagpole and then I recently installed the actual uh, Wii Boost itself and the inside antenna and hardwired the the uh, uh, power supply into a 12 volt drop that we had. So again, I mean, even though we boondock a lot, we've had even a quartzite with tons and tons of people, our our internet cell server was actually pretty decent. So it wasn't really until recently that we really had to, to use it. So I've been really happy with it. And if you're going to do a lot of boondocking or just even, you know, we're in a city right now and it's still really slow. So I think we're going to get the antenna out and, uh, and uh, use it for the next few days that we're here as well but yeah been super happy with it so thank you very much for your questions we always love answering them and if you have more questions please put those in the comments below and we'll either send you a message to answer those questions or we'll do another video because uh, we love getting that information out and so awesome so for now happy travels and